the next tumor that we are going to discuss is again a very famous tumor we are going to discuss with adenoid cystic carcinoma so adenoid cystic adenoid cystic carcinoma if we talk about this is a low grade but very 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 aggressive type uh, sorry this is a slow growing but very aggressive type of tumor let us try to understand what are the important points this is also known as cylindromatous tumor this is also known as cylindromatous tumor so cylindromatous tumor is another name for this tumor cylindromatous tumor let us try to understand two three important points when we talk about adenoid cystic you have to understand it is a slow growing tumor it is a slow growing tumor but but highly malignant but highly malignant what property of this tumor helps us to go to this conclusion that it is highly malignant answer is the property of perineural invasion and hematogenous spread so it is associated with it is associated with perineural invasion perineural invasion and not only perineural invasion it is also associated with hematogenous spread and these two properties makes it actually very 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 you can say aggressive nature of tumor but in fact you have to understand their slow growing tumor i'll i'll tell you what is the importance of this point slow growing now when we talk about this kind of uh, scenario when we have perineural invasion you have to understand when we talk about nerves it is associated when we talk about invasion yes it is associated with axial and circumferential invasion not only this axial and circumferential invasion it is also associated with anti grade or retrograde infection uh, uh, invasion anti grade or retrograde invasion retrograde invasion now the next question is what are the target nerves where this invasion occurs now this invasion involves this invasion involves if you talk about the nerves you have the facial nerve you have the facial nerve and the more important is the trigeminal nerve so facial nerve and the trigeminal nerve what branches of trigeminal nerve are involved maxillary and mandibular so maxillary branch maxillary branch and mandibular branch so maxillary and mandibular branch are actually involved in it may also involve the gasserian ganglion the pterygo palatine ganglion and even cavernous sinus so may may involve may involve cavernous sinus cavernous sinus it may involve pterygo palatine ganglion pterygo palatine ganglion it may involve it may involves the gasserian ganglion also gasserian ganglion so it is very 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 important and you can see it's highly aggressive in the status when we talk about the hematogenous spread and this hematogenous spread is the reason behind the uh, behind the late recurrence and also a uh, you can say metastatic distant metastatic metastasis so you have to understand what are the sites of spread and this leads to this leads to spread and where the spread occurs involving the lungs the lungs the bone the brain so lungs bone brain everything is involved now what is important point here try to see this is again a very 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 unique point when we talk about lung the lung metastasis actually have a late presentation and therefore therefore it is not a contraindication for surgical resection so important important point is lung metastasis in case of adenoid cystic so lung mets in case of adenoid cystic cancer adenoid cystic cancer they are dormant they are dormant and therefore therefore have late presentation therefore have late presentation and therefore and thus the 
lymph uh, the the lung node involvement or you can say the metastatic spots in the lungs they are or metastasis to lungs is not a contraindication for surgery so they have late presentation and thus we have a very important line therefore lung mets therefore lung mets is not a contraindication for surgery this is very important so lung mets is not contraindication for surgery and this is a really very important line that we are reading now let us talk about what are the types what are the types of adenoid cystic cancers we have we have tubular we have tubular we have cribriform we have tubular we have cribriform and we have a solid type solid type so we have three forms tubular cribriform and solid type miscellaneous if you talk about miscellaneous important is this is the most common malignancy this is the most common malignancy involving the sub mandibular gland involving the sub lingual gland involving the minor salivary glands so this is very 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 important point that it is the most common malignancy of these three things overall if you talk about this is the second most common malignancy so overall overall this is the second most common malignancy now one very important and strange question and this question has been asked also what is the most common site for adenoid cystic of the minor salivary gland again then there was a question which was asked in neat and it has been asked in us assembly so it can be asked uh, for undergraduates it has been asked so it can be asked in your exams also the question was what is the most common site for mucoepidermoid of minor salivary glands so what is what is so special about this let us try to understand important when we talk about important malignancies or all the malignancies all the malignancy arising from minor salivary glands from minor salivary gland have a common site of origin have a common site of origin now first of all these tumors are not common but if they occur they have a common site of origin and what is that answer is it is the it is either you write hard palate or better answer will be junction of hard palate with soft palate so we have hard palate or junction of hard palate with soft palate junction of hard palate with soft palate and other than this we have buccal cavity we have buccal cavity we have lips we have alveolus so buccal cavity we have lips everything now on hpe on histopathological examination what how do you see adenoid cystic cancer the adenoid cystic cancer on hpe gives you a classical snowstorm appearance yes or a swiss cheese appearance so it's a swiss cheese swiss cheese appearance or if it is not given in options you can also mark snow storm appearance snow storm appearance when we talk about the management you have to understand that the management of malignancy is always a radical excision of the gland but how to prevent recurrence radiotherapy is must why i'm saying radiotherapy in must do you know in low grade tumors if it is a low grade t1 tumors we might even uh, give the concession we, do, we we might not go for what radiotherapy in those cases but remember here irrespective of what it is radical excision radical excision and along with that the radiotherapy is must the radiotherapy is must otherwise you cannot prevent the tumor from hiding at the level of nerves and hence causing what recurrence so this is very 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 important let us move forward 